Uh, hey, yes. Yeah, so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of Data Aft, where I'll be giving my own takes on the club that I love and follow called the Arsenal. You already know I like to give my own opinion on how society affects people's behavior, but football is also a large part of society, and for most people, and people like me, football makes my weekend or breaks my weekend. When Arsenal wins, I have a fantastic weekend. When Arsenal loses, my weekend tends not to be so great. But I like to keep my reactions to myself, but since I have a platform, why not say my own opinion right here on this platform? So, on a weekly basis, I'll be giving my takes on the game and things like that. Starting with last season, I would say last season to me was a success because personally, I didn't think we were going to win the league last season. I had a lot of bets with people that Arsenal would finish above Liverpool and we did. As a matter of fact, I think I won a couple of quid, 30 quid, and someone refused to pay me. You know yourself, and you know you know you still owe me. Um, but even last season, I predicted that this season, 24-25, would be the season that I think we are going to win the league. Although so far, the transfer window has not filled me with so much hope, but I still have some confidence that we will do it. As, I, as I'm recording right now, the only player we've signed in has been Kaliafori, and... Um, completing David Raya from last season. So basically just one signing. But there's a lot of rumor going on about Merino and so other, so many other players, but I don't really believe rumors until they are signed because if you've supported Arsenal as long as I have, we've heard about Iguain, we've heard about Benzema and things like that. Even Zaha for a long period of time, Mudrik for a long period of time. So rumors don't mean anything until they put pen to paper. And we see the picture of Mikel Ateta on one shoulder and Edu on the other shoulder. So for now, it's only Calia that we've signed, signed. And apologies to all the Italians. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his name yet, but I'm sure as the season goes on, I'm going to have a hang on how to pronounce his name. So, like I said, last season was a good season for me. We challenged again because the previous season, many people, including me, thought it was a fluke. We had a good run and then we tailed off at the end. But last season we showed some some of some sort of consistency that you can say yeah Arsenal has basically gone to the next level and we're ready to eat at the big boys table. So this um, season, hopefully we win the league. And to win the league, obviously you need to look at what went wrong in the previous season so that you can change that going forward. If you don't know what I mean, check out episode thirty of Scatterian Podcast right here on this channel. It's about you know making changes for the future by looking behind, looking at what has happened in the past. So let's take a quick look at how Arsenal may have lost the league. To some people, they believe that Arsenal lost the league when they lost to Aston Villa at the Emirates. And so if you are going to win the league this time, don't lose to Aston Villa at the Emirates, basically. And uh, for people like me that believe that we lost the league because we did not beat Manchester City at their tough, this season gets six points from Manchester City. I believe we can do it because we've already, Ateta has shown that he knows, the he has the tactical nows to be able to deal and counter Pep Guardiola. To be As a matter of fact, the, the, all the games we played against them last season, I think we had the, the slight edge, but it's not about finishing your chances really. Um, so that's so like I said for me that'll be it get six points from Liverpool um, six points against Manchester City six points against Liverpool will also be good don't just draw also get six points um, to some people they say um, Arsenal lost five league games while Manchester lost three league games so basically don't lose as many games if you think that we lost the league because we dropped four points to Fulham then we have to, you know, make up those grounds, make up those points against um, West Ham, make up the points against Newcastle. You know, be on the front foot throughout the season and not just at the tail end of the season. But we know that is not how life works because every season, football teams strengthen. Fulham have strengthened their squad, so I'm mean, slightly worried again. I don't know if Marco Silva already has Ateta's number and, you know, his tactical has the tactical counter to Ateta's um, genius. Maybe that's what that's what's happening here. Lupitegi has signed a lot of players for West Ham, so I don't think West Ham are going to be as soft. If David Moyes could handle Ateta, I'm slightly worried about Lupitegi. I know we faced Lupitegi when he was the manager of Wolves briefly and we had the upper hand, but 
this is a different team. West Ham are a much bigger team and a much bigger club than Wolves. They have better squad than Wolves and they have players that are very more expressive than Wolverhampton because they've, I think they sold um, Pe Pedro Neto to, to Chelsea now. Um, like I said, I don't really follow rumors, but anyways, Neto is gone and things like that. So basically do something different. And um, I think someone asked Ateta in the press conference uh, in the preseason, um, what would it take to to overtake City? And he said 114 points. That's basically going unbeaten and winning every game throughout the season. That would be a difficult task. It's not impossible. We had the Arsenal, we've gone unbeaten before, but winning every single game. Well, if we won most of the games in the 93% season, I believe we can do it again. And I trust Ateta to be able to, to ginger the boys, to gear the boys up towards you know winning the league um speaking about ateta as well i like his innovative nature i'm one of the people that when ateta took the job even up until the 93 percent season like three percent season that's what i choose to call it now um i still didn't have a lot of faith in ateta not because i didn't think that it was a tactical genius because you could see that he was reading the game and was making adjustments on a weekly basis but i just didn't like the way our front three played and we're not scoring a lot of goals even in the 93 percent season we scored a lot of goals up up until a certain point and it became one nil one nil and then it, it made adjustment last season trying to beat like score one nil and then win or two one low but this time please let's go back and blazing things we have the squad rotate your squad more stop using the same 11. but again i'm not a manager i shouldn't be giving you advice i don't have the <laughs> the, the tactical now to do so but what i would like to see is us blitzing teams when we have the upper hand you know stop letting them feel like they can they have they have some leg in the game the same way we're blitzing them towards the tail end of last season from january let's do that again from the start of the season we have enough players that are versatile and can rotate so let's rotate those people and then maybe from january you have your your fixed squad that you're going to be using to to beat the team so speaking about the innovative nature of ateta i like it because he's doing things to change this week there's been a report about him you know inviting pickpockets to a dinner to take to nick things off the players and some people are saying he's doing too much but to me the way i took it is that he's trying to tell the players to always be switched on basically don't take your stuff for granted obviously nobody's going to come and pick pick their pockets on the pitch i don't even think they have pockets in they have pockets in their in their football shorts but it's about being switched on don't take what you have don't take your own possession for, for for granted if you're topping the league don't take it for granted that's the message i got from it ateta has been so innovative i remember when he did the play the you never walk alone stuff in the state in the training ground and everyone was laughing at Nikola ateta at the time laughing at us now oh my god he's doing too much pepper has gotten into his head he thinks whatever whatever but since then have we lost at anfield no are the boys playing better against bigger teams yes you know he has done even when he drew the whole heart stuff on the board and saying this is your heart and mind and all of that stuff he is doing something that's getting to the players he has in the space of two three years he has transformed the mentality of our players to that of winning mentality saka speaks like he's the world best you know ben white speaks like he's the world best odegaard so much confidence william saliba so much confidence um declan rice so much confidence that's because ateta is doing something great for them so i don't listen to all of the haters i don't listen to all of these manchester united fans sean t and, Ju and judency in particular i don't listen to you guys because we see the changes that michael ateta is making at our club the fans have bought into it i have fully i am fully bought into michael ateta right now as long as we keep doing what we're doing scoring lots of goals and hopefully win the league this season like i said um since we've not signed a lot of players in a parallel universe what team would i like to see at any point in the season this is the team i would like to see in a parallel universe so as you mean that we don't live in this one we live in a different universe um so i would like to see califori as left back center back pairing obviously you can't you can't you can't change what works gabriel stone called magales william saliba and benjamin white those would be the back four no need to change them they are solid they have a chemistry already california is going to integrate well um i didn't watch preseason games again to me it's just um, a kickball exercise but people reading reviews on social media it turns out that he played very well so have him there 
obviously as the number six no not number six the two in the central midfield or defensive midfield box to box and six Declan Rice obviously he has to start and the person next to Declan Rice to me bear with me on this one is going to be Julian Timber Timba has shown he has defensive nouns. Timba, when he has played in the inverted position, even the last game of last season, against was he against Everton? I think so. You could see what he was doing from that position as well. So put Julian Timba there and Declan Rice by his side. So either and they alternate. When Rice is a six, Timba goes forward. He has good passing range. He has good ball knowledge. He knows when to shoot, when to pass, when to cross. Fantastic. Or if 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 the Clarice is going forward, let Julian Timber sit and let Rice do his thing. Drive into space, cross the ball to Saka, and let Saka do his magic. So that will be my two in the in the lower end of midfield. And in the upper end of midfield is the the the, the, the best guys. We have Gabriel Martinelli, the speedster. You need to have that guy there. The rising people on the on the left wing. In the middle, it has to be our captain and boy wonder Odegaard if if, if Odegaard was an if it was an evil boy he'll be called Odiqua good which means the boy is good so we have Martinelli Odiqua good right there in the middle and on the right wing you already know it has to be Starboy Saka the little chili but um, Starboy Saka your chili people are getting used to the, the taste now to the level you have to spice things up so move from chili you have to be a scotch bonnet right now start burning people's tongues start burning people with paste dribbling them remember those days in your under 16 under 18 when you were used to burn people for fun I know I don't like people dribbling that much but you know try to beat people sometimes if they kick you um, don't worry you'll be covered you'll be covered All right so up your levels Mr. Starboy Saka let's go from little chili to a scotch bonnet and up top the central forward i'm going to go with leandro bossard right gabriel jesus is okay harvard is okay but we know trossard is a good finisher and when trossard played center forward center forward in the last season you could see how he was alternating very well with saka with martinelli you know if martinelli, martinelli drives to the center Trossard goes out left. If Starboy Saka drives to the center, Trossard goes out right. He's good with both feet. He can shoot. He can cross. He's very, very clinical. So let's have the goal scoring machine all front. So our front four has to be Odegaard, Starboy Saka, Gabriel, Martin Gabriel Martinelli, as well as Leandro Bossa. Then you can bring in um, Kai Havertz once in a while. So that will be my starting 11. No, my starting 10 for goalkeeper. I'm going to go with Ramsdale. Ramsdale will be my goalkeeper. I know Raya did a good job last season, but the season before, that Aaron Ramsdale and David Raya had the same number of clean sheets. I think because our defense is, our defense is good, our keepers are always going to shine. It, I'm worried a bit about Raya's um, shot stopping. Yes, he can come out to um, collect crosses, but we still need some shot stopping because every time he faced shots, more often than not, it was a goal. But Ramsdale has had one year on the bench to soak in um, the, the how to concentrate, I believe. So bring Ramsdale back into the fold. That would be what I would like to see in a parallel universe. However, we don't live in a parallel universe. So the manager, the gaffer, Mikel Ateta, would have to choose his own 11. And whatever he does, we support it. However, if... The, line, the starting lineup does not work, I'm going to come for you. Not in terms of like bashing you and insulting you. No, no, no. You're going to be criticized, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a very logical person. You're not going to get insults from me. I'm not one of those super fans that believe that if Arsenal win, it's Mikel Arteta. And if, if, if Arsenal loses, then it's the players. Also, I'm not one of those super fans that thinks they're not super fans, but hate on the super fans that believe that if, if Arsenal wins is the brilliance of the players the same ones that they always criticize and if Arsenal loses it's Mikel Arteta <laughs> you know for me the buck starts and stops with the manager if we win is the manager if we lose is the manager as Jose Mario once said he is the brain 
the players are the legs. So that's the way I see football as well. The manager has his tactics, he has his game plan, and implements it on the day. So if you make the wrong choice because you made a mistake in analyzing the other team, I'm coming for you. I'll praise you when we win, I'll criticize you when we lose. Players will always also get their stuff because they have some level of responsibility but for me the manager is the ultimate so you know make us proud as you have in the last two seasons let's win the league because no excuses anymore hopefully you sign merino and a striker if you don't sign a striker it's not the end of the world we scored a lot of goals hopefully we can replicate that as we have in the last two seasons but we do need someone clinical so play trossard up top a bit more him up top a bit more yet he comes and scores from the left but let's force nine he's not done bad so that's that's what i'm going to say um this weekend we're going to be playing wolverhampton wanderers since ateta took over we've only lost against them twice i believe so i think we're just going to do the business first game back let's play well let's go under three four five goals and have a good time so that is my preview of the season my predictions for the season i don't do in-game prediction because i'm not good at it each time i predict it doesn't it doesn't work so i'm not going to predict for fun but um this time next week i'm going to give my own review of the game and you know hopefully we win and it's all going to be fun as the first game of the season so this is how we're going to be doing it on a weekly basis i'll be giving my takes on our snow please if you've enjoyed the content so far like and subscribe if you're new or yet to do so so that you don't miss these episodes as they come out weekly thank you very much this has been data aft and on to the next time as always use your brain SCFR.